been to our final topic. Luis Neri is taking on Brandon Figueroa. Maybe I said that backwards. Yep. Maybe it's Brandon Figueroa versus who knows who's the promotional A side on this one. Right. Um, I got to say, I'm going to be tuning into this. Also, my man Xavier Martinez from Sacramento is yep. on the undercard. I'm trying to think off the top of my brain who the third fight is. I'm blanking Danny on Danny Roman. Danny yep. Roman, one of the nicest people ever. Taken on Hindo, Hindu Espinosa, the guy with the dot on the head. Yep. Okay, I'm back in the game. I, I remembered it. Uh, right. Luis Neri, Brandon Figueroa, kind of the same person in a way, like kind of like wild brawlers that kind of throw a game plan out the window after a while. What are you expecting about this fight? Uh, obviously, I'm expecting something far more than a lot of other people. A lot of people seem to think this is going to be the, the follow-up act to what's going to be a miserable month for the Figueroa family. Um, I, I don't get it. I, I think Brandon Figueroa is right there among the best at 122. Uh, I think he's a lot braver than people give him you know, credit for. They seem to think that you know, he and Omar both kind of benefit from you know, being favorites with Al Heyman. And I, I don't know. I love watching Brandon Figueroa fight. Um, you know, when he's pressed, he, he digs in and he has to fight. I mean, Julio Ceja came in miserably heavy. You know, when they fought in November 2019, Brandon Figueroa went forward with the fight. I thought he really showed his medal that night. Um, I, I love the fact that, you know, when he took the fight last September, um, I think it was Damian Vasquez, who he fought in his last fight. Yeah, yeah, he was supposed to win that, but he took it with the decision that he wanted to fight another champion at 122 in his next fight. And he wasn't going to accept another optional fight. You know, Luis Neri was also on that card and he told BBC, I want to, you know, if there's a way to unify or even if, you know, his, his secondary belt wasn't at stake, he wanted this fight. He has this fight. Luis Neri, he wants to unify at 122. So I, I think they both went into that night knowing there was a realistic chance of, that they were going to fight next. And I'm glad that they followed through. You know, they didn't waste any little time. We're not getting another, you know, that they're on the same card fight facing, you know, subpar opposition. They're facing each other. I love it. I personally think it's a 50-50 fight. And I'm very curious to see what Luis Neri looks like. You know, I did, to his and Eddie Reynoso's credit, you know, they, I think they both recognized that that relationship didn't work. I thought he looked very uneven in that fight. It seemed like he was still trying to, you know, um, I guess get, you know, comfortable with, you know, the style of teaching that Eddie Reynoso can provide. Um, it just didn't seem like a good fit for him. So, you know, they've gone their separate ways. So I'm curious to see what Luis Neri looks like. And this is, to me, that's dangerous for him to not know, you know, what, what to expect from him in a fight of this magnitude. Brandon Figueroa, I think we know what we're going to get from him. Um, I, I, I love this fight. I'm really torn on who's going to win, to be honest. Well, for me, that's a big red flag when you're when you're changing coaches a lot but when you're changing yeah. coaches in front of like one of the biggest fights of your career one of the biggest magnitudes and it's one of the most well-respected coaches in the sport currently and you're like you know our styles don't really match it's kind of to me that goes uh oh what is it about you as a person that one of the best right. coaches in boxing doesn't really get along with you also with lewis nary the fact that he tested positive for steroids i'm someone where that yeah. deeply impacts me where i don't really forgive people that do steroids in the sport of boxing. I do believe in change. I don't always judge people, but it's something that sticks in my mind, especially if a boxer is stuck with it. I think for Brandon Figueroa, one of the things is he's one of these pressure fighters, will fighters, where he puts so much on an opponent. It's very easy to look at him and be like, oh, I bet you this guy would beat him. Like it's very easy right. to underestimate him, but I am with you. I do think that there is some intangibles to him that his brother Omar doesn't even have. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, and I'm going to give Omar a little bit of credit too, because a lot of people, they just don't like the way he's him. You know, he, he's had the same issues ever since he moved up from 135, where he's just, you know, blown weight. He's made up his own weight, you know, like he did with uh, Antonio DeMarco. We found, I, I remember I was, I was at that fight. I was at the weigh-in. We we're expecting him to weigh at or close to 140. All of a sudden, like he's announced at 151 pounds, I look at PBC people and I'm like, what the hell was the weight? And like, even they were, some of them seemed stunned. So, but the thing with Omar too, was like, he lost to Ugas. He just lost his last fight against um, Abel Ramos, but you really have to beat the crap out of him in order to get him to that point. He's not going to well. And I think Brandon has that same kind of dog in him. I personally think Brandon is going to accomplish more than Omar had a chance to. And even on paper, I think Brandon is the better or maybe more polished fighter of the two. But I do also get the sense that if you're going to beat him, you really have to beat the crap out of him. Lou, in, in old school, Luis Neri has that chance. We haven't seen that Luis Neri in a long time. I mean, he even struggled against, you know, Juan Carlos Payano for a lot of, you know, a, much of their fight. Now, you know, another fight where that's the thing with Neri too. Not only did he have that positive drug test, they tried to dismiss it or whatever, but he's also missed weight at least twice, if not three times, once where it led to a cancellation when he was supposed to fight Manuel Rodriguez. 
So we're still waiting for that disciplined version of Luis Neri, you know, that we've been promised. So that's another red flag. It's not only that he's changing trainers, I'm still not convinced that he's the, the type of disciplined fighter where we're going to get the, you know, the Luis Neri of old. That, you know, the guy, that's the version I think they say is going to blow through Brandon Figueroa. We even, I would disagree with that, but I would make that guy the favorite. We haven't seen that guy for a while, and he's in a new weight class. He's not at 118 where he's overpowering people. He's at 122 where, you know, the guys are as big as him, if not bigger. I hate to break it. I almost will say I don't think that version of Luis Neri exists anymore because oftentimes when those guys – go on hiatus we look at a broner we look at other guys in the sport they're just they don't exist anymore they get to a certain place and something isn't there i think what you speak about you've really sold me on brandon figueroa is i think the difference between him and omar is omar it feels like it's a job boxing i think Mm -hmm. brandon really loves it and i think that's what makes him dangerous is i feel the enthusiasm for the sport and i think that him versus stephen fulton down the road which is the next fight for the winner that's a yep. weird style clash because Fulton is extremely talented, but Figueroa is a guy that's going to kind of say F talent. I'm just going to come at you. Right. Uh, yeah. I, I I'm almost looking forward to that fight more. I, you know, if you're going to put a, I know you're not forcing me to make a prediction. I'm going to make one. I, I think I'm going to lean towards Brandon Figueroa just because I almost look forward to that style more of uh, Stephen Fulton versus Brandon Figueroa, just because one, I'd be more confident that the fight would happen on time. I don't think he's the guy that's going to get, you know, injured or delay to come up with some other stupid excuse but yeah either way i mean regardless of what happens this weekend i think it's a very interesting style for um for, for stephen cole to face in september and i love the fact that they both know what they're fighting for it's not that whoever wins okay well maybe let's go negotiate this third fight it's you know you're now you know you win this fight it's the biggest win for regardless of you know whoever come whoever prevails this weekend but then you have an even bigger thing you know to look for into this in, in september so that's, I think, adding that element with this weekend, that, that's the thing I really love. Yeah, I mean, it's good. Uh, quick hits. Daniel Roman, he's taken on uh, Ricardo Espinoza. Roman did not look good on the pay-per-view Charlo card. Off the top of my head, I'm not being a box rec gangster. Don't know if he's returned. Daniel Roman's one of the most likable people, really hard worker, really got it out of the mud in the sport of boxing. Yeah. What's your expectation for Daniel Roman in this bout? Um, I, I like Ricardo Espinosa a lot. I think he's a bit in over his head. You know, granted, Danny Roman seems like the type, you know, he could fight off or down to the level of co- uh, competition. I was kind of surprised that, you know, I know Payano can make a lot of people look bad. I think I was a little surprised at how much Roman struggled. A lot of people thought that, you know, the decision was a little bit generous. I, I thought it was, you know, a, a, a fight that could have gone either way personally. But I think someone of Roman Dilk, I don't know if he should have been in that position. I would like to have seen him dominate uh, Juan Carlos Payano more than he did. I think he should get, he should accomplish that this weekend against uh, Ricardo Espinosa. Um, I, I still think he's one of the best at 122. Um, uh, th- maybe there's even an argument to be made that, you know, whoever wins this weekend, th- this is the fight they need to win in order to prove that they're better than Danny Roman. So uh, he, he's still there to me in the top two, top three. And r- granted, let's remember, you know, for, you know, however long he, he reigns as champ, he was one round away from still become, you know, still serving as champ, you know. He, a lot of people thought he beat uh, uh, MJ, you know, in that fight. I, I thought the decision was right, but I thought it was a fight that could have gone either way. So to me, he's right there in the mix. I just don't want to see him having to accept too many more of these fights. And especially if it's not like, I mean, he fought on that uh, pay-per-view in September. So this is his first fight since then. That's, you know, off the top of my head, that's an eight-month, you know, gap. I don't want to see him stuck in that. If, if, he's, if these are the fights he's going to have to settle for while, while waiting for another title shot. Yeah, I think that you brought, you always bring up great points. It's cautionary. It's very cautionary, that last fight. So is he going to be the guy from the MJ fight or is he going to be the guy from the Piano fight? For me, this is going to be an assessment of where is Daniel Roman currently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And like I said, I I think it's a very good style for him because, you know, Espinosa, he comes to fight. He's not going to run for 12 rounds. He's not going to try to sink out the joint. And I think that'll serve to his detriment. I I think Daniel Roman will have the style that, He'll, he'll find, you know, the opponent that complements his own style. And we should see, I'm not going to say the Danny Roman of old, but, you know, the Danny Roman that did go, you know, on to become a unified champion. Also, Xavier Martinez fighting one, Carlos Burgos. He got dropped in his last fight, had to dig deep against Claudio Moreo. A lot of people forget Burgos is a really tricky guy. Guys like Devin Haney yeah. have beaten him recently, but he fought for a world title against Mikey Garcia probably about seven or eight years ago off the top of my head. 
what do you expect from this fight? Because Martinez at a good point of his career was knocking everybody out rather quickly. I, I kind of am hoping as someone that's known him for a long time that he goes rounds to get experience in this yeah. fight. What do you see it as the boxing? He'll definitely go around in this fight. I, I think this is a distance fight for him. Um, I, I think it's a better matchup for him than I, I don't know a lot about Abraham Montoya. I'm not going to completely dismiss him, but it's, this is a, to me, it's a good stiff test for Xavier Martinez and his head's in the right place too. He appreciates what he had to go through against uh, Claudio Marrero. Because he had that scare, you know, he, he was down. He's never been down in his career. He was down twice in that fight. He had to overcome that. You know, it was the toughest challenge of his career, and he respected it. He did it against a guy who had a secondary belt of featherweight. You know, who could still pose problems for people. You know, at his best, which to me that was, you know, Claudio Marrero at his best and at his most disciplined. And you know, Xavier Martinez survived that test. So I like the fact that he didn't rush right back into the ring. He, he got his head right. Um, he has a lot of motivation because he wants to. He's expecting a fight with Chris Holbert. You know if he wins this weekend. He wants a title shot next. And so I, I believe we're going to see a fully focused version of Xavier. Um, not a guy that's going to... I don't expect him to blow through uh, Burgos at all. I think that'd be a hell of a statement if he does. I, I think it'd be a heck of a statement if he outboxes him 10 out of 12 rounds as well. So I think it's going to be a good competitive 116-112 uh, type of fight. Um, it, it depends on, too, if 